Okay, now we're going to be looking at section number 12, near the end of this uh, learning aim task. Um, section 12, first things first, pages 54 and 55 of the book has everything you need. Um, you need to obviously break it down into two separate paragraphs. And this is basically asking you to answer what you need to make the design. If you were to make uh, your, you know, the next section, which is going to be after section 13, and we're going to move on to learning game C. What will you need to make uh, your your designs? Um, so you need to have a list of tools that you need to use to create your design. Uh, and I'm telling you right now, especially if you're in my class, you will be using Microsoft PowerPoint. You have no choice on that. You are using Microsoft PowerPoint to make your designs. Um, so you need to research and understand, if you don't know already, the many different features and tools that this particular software that Microsoft PowerPoint actually has. What does it have on to offer to help you with this project? Think about things like animations, slide transitions, the ability to make buttons, hyperlinks, shapes, colors, fonts, slide masters, and etc. So there's a ton of things that Microsoft PowerPoint has as a software, as a piece of sort of tool that will allow you to make a design uh, that is interactive, that will give a, a, a true sense of how your user interface will look at the end. Um, if you are not aware, then you need to do some research. You need to go online, Google, what's PowerPoint have? You need to play around, play around with uh, PowerPoint and give it a go. Now, I am going to do some training in my lesson around uh, creating um, example apps, if you will. Uh, using PowerPoint but like I said it's the designs for them it's not the real thing so I actually think I have yeah there it is a video here this was on YouTube as well again not taking any credits for this if you want to go to YouTube and check this out this is a great uh, video it's a long video though it's about half an hour long I'm gonna drop this video volume down there we go it's about half an hour so actually this is an eight minute clip actually I thought there's a, a longer video than that but it shows you how you can create a nice simple app but for a phone but now even though we're not making it for a phone and it's going to be for a tablet you can use the skills shown in this video uh, to create your own now bear in mind ladies and gents you're not actually making it right now yeah this here is going to be for the next part but this is just showing you how it could work how it could look um, this is the one I was thinking about. This is the, the long one. I'm sure. Let's, let's give it a quick second. Now, this is just, again, yeah, 35 minutes long. This is just to show you how it looks now. If you look at the thing here, the final product, it looks like a real app. Um, but he will show in a second, and I've taken the volume off. So if you want to Google this one, uh, how to create mock-ups, wireframes, and prototypes with PowerPoint. If you just type that into YouTube, you'll find it. Uh, what he will show is, how it looks so these are his by the way this is great so this is basically the sketches not particularly neat but this is what you're basically going to be doing for a tablet uh, device rather than a phone uh, but it'll be a lot neater than that showing you uh, the examiner the moderator the teacher uh, where things will be um, and you can see exactly the storyboard where it goes from one to another to another when you click it, it goes here when you click it, it goes there and so on and so forth so this is a great example of how it could look now you can see how he's made this this is a powerpoint now if you look at that picture that just looks like a, a, a print screen from a from a, from an app but what he's done is made it on powerpoint using shapes and text so he's using the real one and he's creating it out here step by step to make it look like the uh, an app you can see here you know these are boxes pictures and so on and so forth and he's just organized it and in the slides, because it's a PowerPoint, you can have these as separate slides. So each slide is a separate screen. And when you click on a button, it goes to a specific uh, slide. Or in the real okay, in the in the real world, it would be a uh, page. So you need to look for this, obviously, just to get some ideas. But we're not making this colorful, designed, animated version just yet, because that's the next part. What we're doing right now is. We, you need to understand what it what is available. So as you've seen in that video, um, 
there's going to be a heavy use of shapes and fonts and animations and you know things like that. You may need to crop things, you may need to cut things, you may need to resize things and rotate things. And it's those tools that we're talking about. So you're going to say software requirement is that we're going to be using the Microsoft PowerPoint software. Uh, that's if you're in my class. You might use something else if you're in a so, you know, someone else's lesson. And you're talking about these tools. So if you don't have these words talking about how PowerPoint allows you to use animations, slide transitions, buttons, uh, hyperlinks, shapes, colors, and actually talk about it. Don't just list it out like this. If it looks like this, it's not enough. This is my uh, list of things to help you formulate and structure your sentences. If this was enough, then basically I'm giving you the answers and that's not enough. This is a prompting exercise. You have to go on and explain it. Hardware is simply what physical items, what does your computer or your laptop need for you to run that software? So um, this should be relatively easy because all you have to do is go online and research hardware required to use Microsoft PowerPoint. So if you actually Google those words, um, hardware requirements for the use of Microsoft PowerPoint or whatever software you plan to use, you'll get some re you know search results that show you the kind of things that you need. Now, I've already found one for you there it is, we go to that website. I'm gonna open it up and let that load to show you what I mean. It gives you all the things that you need and just need to consider what it is that you need uh, physically for you to use that software. So while that loads up, I'm gonna talk about a few of the things like um, consider w the use of sounds, where you can use it, how you can use it. What will you need to record and play sound? Well, think about it. If you're gonna record and play sound right now, obviously you can't see this, but I'm using a, mi a microphone to record my voice. Uh, I'm not using, um, a, a standard microphone off the laptop because it would have been far too quiet. So you might need a microphone, or at the very least, you might say the microphone from the from the screen, which is fine. Some of you might want to record it separately in a quiet room, as I am right now, so you don't have any uh, interruptions coming in because you want to be professional. It's those kind of things you need to be thinking about, really, really pushing the boat. Going back to this, you'll see on this uh, page. It says for an Office 2013 Microsoft PowerPoint 2013, uh, you need a number of different things. And here it is hardware requirements. It tells you. So you can take bits and bobs from here. You can say, as a bare minimum, um, 1 gigahertz times 86, 64 processor, 1 gigahertz, uh, gigabytes of RAM, 30 bits system, or 2 gigabytes of RAM, 64 bit system, 3 gigabytes of hardware drive space of, as a minimum. Yeah, for both Office 2013 and PowerPoint 2013. However, exceeding these requirements will result in PowerPoint 2013 loading and running faster. So you can take some bits from here to answer this here.